this video, I'm gonna create a glowing resin crystal sword. An elven sword that glows when enemies are nearby. That glowing effect would be inspired by how Sting operates in the Lord of the Rings mythology. Glowing when orcs are nearby. Using Sting as my design starting point, I wanted to basically make Sting's daddy. Not that Sting. I mean, that's Sting's daddy, but Sting from Lord of the Rings, if Sting had the biological capability of being born. This is getting weird, but you get the point. I also took inspiration from some of the other swords in Lord of the Rings, but also the crystal sword from Diablo 2. I also needed to brainstorm how to construct this. A lot of this would come down to some of my tests and experiments, but I do need to at least have a rough idea as to how I'm literally going to build this. So aside from roughing out the visual design plan, I also needed to do a bit of a construction design plan. to get yourself awesome sketch materials, go to prosketchpack.com for $200 worth of epic and professional art materials for $99. Custom sketchbooks, carry case and more. Links in the description. Thanks for supporting the channel. Now, I have a design that I'm really happy with, but we gotta dabble first. And it all starts off with monster clay. The key thing being, I need to go through all of the steps of creating the full sword multiple times and smaller so that I have some wiggle room because I tend to make mistakes and dramatic choices. Now the cool and tricky thing about silicon slash resin is they pick up every detail. That if this has a matte sheen to the surface, so will the silicon and therefore so will the resin. So if I want to make this shiny and crystalline, it needs to be shiny on this surface. And hey, we gotta use the fact that it picks up every detail to our advantage. Carve on some improvised elven things. We'll do research for the proper sword, but this one could be whatever. Some scratches and stuff too. With a touch of a rocket release so I can get the silicon out when it's set, it's time to mix up the silicon and make our mold. And while that's setting, we have a sword to design to scale. Now, the trick to doing this in a way that's gonna really work is getting the design that I can anchor to, and it has to be symmetrical in four directions, top to bottom and side to side. There's only one finishing touch this design needs, and that's some elven writing. Something that can echo the message of this blade and its power for all eternity. I'm starting to get nervous about the functionality because I'm going to be doing this in an epoxy resin and I don't know if it's going to hold its own weight. So I have these acrylic rods that I'm thinking if I do a pour with this running down the center, it might help channel light and help be a support. I've got little torches to test with our dabble, but the hope is with it embedded underneath. Yeah, that's something. All right, I'm, you got my attention, sir. I'm paying attention. I'm hitting that like button right now. I'm, you know what, I, I might subscribe. Good idea, I say to you, good idea. What I wanna do is have these rods in here like that, just for my experiment. And at least for our experiment, that will end up with enough of a pore that goes under the rod so we can sort of see how the pigments and light affect it. Yes, I said pigments. This is a two to one mix of epoxy casting resin. I've never used this stuff before, which is why we're using it in our dabble. And I'm gonna do three experiments with things mixed in them to see what creates the coolest crystalline slash glowing effect. I always love mixing in alcohol ink. Now I'm not gonna do much else with this because the, I mean, the color's probably too strong. Then in these two, I want to play with mica powder and glitter. Yay! Last but not least, it's meant to be glowy and I don't know how it works, but I was told that if we put a bit of this stuff in by a bit, he probably meant 
and one drop artist's ink. Let's see what happens. Let's dab it, baby. Promising start, but we won't know if any of these is gonna be good until we come back tomorrow and we can remove them. But that's gonna take ages, unless you're watching this, in which case, yeah, here we are, and here they are. There's been a little bit of leaking. Oh, it was not, uh, oh, it's not fully set. Okay. They're, they're, they're a little flopsy. I'm gonna pop them over here. We're gonna have to look at that at the end of the day, which means it's time to move on a little bit blind to the big one. Let's go. So now we're moving on to doing the same thing, but bigger. I'm gonna laser cut a box that I can do both the monster clay pour and then do the silicon pour in the same box. Now with my slab of monster clay on a tray in front of me ready to sculpt, it was just a matter of using my design reference and bringing it to life through the ancient mystical art of sculpture. One of the things I need to be really conscious of is the thickness of the blade. It can be really tempting to sculpt this piece that I'm doing now thinking that's the thickness of the sword, but it's gonna be double this because this is just half. I really like how this is coming together. I added a few finishing scratches and cracks because I want this to look like a sword that's been through a lot. Slain many foes and traveled on adventures for thousands of years. Then I just reconstructed my box, which sat waiting for me the whole time because I sculpted on it. I used the old measuring volume with rice trick to get exactly the right amount of silicon to pour in here and put it aside to set ready for resin. Now, while that is setting, we're moving on to the handle. Now, I don't know if the resin's gonna hold its own weight, so my theory is if we use something stronger in the handle like steel and also let the pour go into that, it'll hold together, fingers crossed. Tom, I just realized I'm forging a sword in Lord of the Rings. Like, and metal! This is metal, dude, and we're forging. Let's get some mood lighting happening. Time to let the fires of the forge cool for a moment because I think our double daggers are ready to check out. Oh my God, I think these are really cool maybe. It looks really cool. That looks really crystalline. Now the test is, does it channel light? Okay, so this is number one. Number two, I prefer number one with the lighting. Number three, never seen this one before. This one is the mystery powder and a drop of acrylic ink. See what this looks like. I think we have it. I love it. All right, so now we're ready for a resin pour. This is still not fully cured. I am hoping it's gonna set hard. So again, still a bunch of untested and unknowns, but it's leading some cool places. So all that remains is to do the pour. Well, that's not true. There's so much that remains, but this is the first major pour. So I need to make sure to keep track of the amount of drops and the amount of powder that I'm putting in because I have to match it exactly on the other side. With the perfect galactic mix of mystical resin poured, it's time to suspend these rods, which are hopefully gonna really add a lot of punch to that glowing magical effect. Time will tell if this project is gonna be merciful on us. We just need to step away and come back tomorrow and head back into the fires of the forge. Now 
I am no master welder and I've never welded on this channel before. But with that said, I'm pretty happy with this. I think even as a beginner, I made a pretty serviceable guard and pommel for my elven sword. These took all day and I'm exhausted. <laughs> These are honestly just accents to the main event, which is the crystal sword. I am so nervous right now. And this is one of two pours. I have to take this out in one piece, then I have to flip it and somehow do another pour and put this on top and make it as seamless as possible. Let's see if it comes out first. One step at a time. Oh, nervous. <gasps> okay, off to a good start. <laughs> now I need to figure out exactly how much to pour in. All right, I need that much resin. I also am going to paint some of this on here. It will help the resin stick to the resin and also hopefully avoid some air pockets. The amount of work and squishy fiddling and sticky smooshing it took to try and work out those air bubbles without having too much resin on the outer edges, it is really hard to get right. But with a lot of finessing, forcing my half sword onto the liquid resin, I think I've pushed out all the air bubbles and I think it has a shot at being a decent crystal sword. But only time will tell. It's time to bring all of the pieces together. I cut out a few strips of leather, decided to go with this reddish brown because, well, it stings daddy. So we're gonna keep the jeans in there. After hammering, gluing, and sealing the handle to the guard, let's go check out how our resin cast went. So far, so good, but the, uh, the not so good thing is I can see some bubbles. A little bit of a uh, popsicle stick stuck to the end there. Hopefully nothing I can't shave off. Oh, that's a sword! Oh, that's a sword! Okay, okay, we got, we're doing this. Okay, there, as you can see, there's, there's little bubbles. The good thing about resin is you can hide bubbles by filling them with resin. Now, if I had painted this traditionally, I would dry brush up to a white edge. This would create a crystalline look, but paint is opaque and my sword is transparent and I wanna keep that transparent property. So I did what I think can make an equivalent effect by sanding up to a sharper white point on the edges. The sanding, of course, making it lighter, even more matte, and hopefully would work with the sword in a way that would catch the light. But then on to something more experimental. The powder, the pigment that we've been mixing with the resin created a little bit of a glowing effect. Now I was told that it has this capability, but usually I just expect that doesn't work very well. Given that it accidentally showed that it can glow well, I thought I'd test that out a little bit and lo and behold, yeah, we got a glowing sword. So uh, with that said, all that was left was to add a bit of glowing pop. Okay, we've got all the pieces, all the key ingredients to make something phenomenal. And I'm really excited, but you might've noticed if you watched last week's Pokemon project video and this video, this is a bit of a level up in production. We are deciding to try doing one video a week instead of two and just putting a lot more into them to make the best videos possible. And I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button and leave a comment down below. It really can be that simple to have YouTube understand that you want more of this sort of stuff so we can do more of this sort of stuff. By the way, I am updating the merch on jazzastudios.com to bring back some of the classics. All of those are ways to help us dive deeper and deeper into our art projects. Speaking of which, it's time to hold our breath and do a deep dive. Okay, so it's looking like there's a, there's a, yeah, and a, uh, there is, even with the supports removed, it's staying straight. Even if I tilt it, that means the blade is supported in the handle by the resin. That's there. 
The is, well, it was really cold in the warehouse over the weekend, so it was a really long curing, and there's resin everywhere, so there was definitely a leak. I don't know how much resin is in there that's keeping it secure, but there's definitely a lot of resin everywhere else. Now the big question is, can I separate the handle from the support? <laughs> this is where like one wrong move can cause a, a lot of regret. Oh, oh, bit of cleanup and we've got a sword. We actually did it. This is way too satisfying. And it's even more satisfying that it looks exactly like what I drew, but it's cooler in real life. And I can finally be the hero I was always meant to be. It glow, it actually glows. It's not just Sting's daddy by name, it Sting's daddy by nature. The pigment, when you like flood it with LED light, it charges the, the pigment that glows so that it glows stronger. Whoa, that's a glowy sword! That is super glowy. It's like the only thing visible in this room, but it's so clear. And if that weren't enough, there is one last thing we need to do. We just forged an epic weapon. And as you know, any awesome YouTube videos where they make a cool weapon, they do a cut test. Let's do it. Look at that, right down the middle. Okay, first piece for you, Dave. Oh, lovely, thank you. Look, it's fit for purpose and everything. Absolutely like butter, amazing. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to smash that like button. That would be a real treat to me. And uh, if you subscribed, you can expect some treats yourself in the future like this. And I think that's the best video we've ever made. That tastes like victory.